she's also our dog sitter. Well, now, now you're saying something. We're, <clears throat> we're ready to begin this evening's board meeting. The school board meeting of February 11th, 2014 is now called to order. The time is 6.02 p.m. At this time, we request all cellular phones and or pagers be turned off or put in the silent mode. And we also ask that you please refrain from using flash photography, except during the special presentation portion of the meeting. We'd like to take this opportunity to remind members of the public of the district's mission, which is to ensure that each student achieves his or her highest personal potential and the district's vision to be a world-class school system. Tonight, I want to introduce uh, Natalia Camargo, who is our student. No, you're right. You can wave. You can stand if you want to. Or... <laughs> she is our uh, student representative and will be here to this meeting and the next one as well. And we welcome her and look forward to her comments later on uh, in the meeting. Uh, Natalia is a senior at Ida Baker High School in Cape Coral. She'll be attending Southeastern University in the fall, majoring in international business. Her ultimate life goal is not very impressive. She only wants to be on Forbes magazine top 100 most powerful women in the world. <laughs> With her business degree, Natalia hopes to one day become CEO of a big corporation. She was born in Brazil and her family moved to the United States when she was in elementary school. She can speak fluent Portuguese, English, and Spanish. Throughout high school, she's participated in many extracurricular activities, including JROTC, swimming, rowing, cross country, marching band, National Honor Society, and student government, in which she currently holds a position of president. Natalia is a group leader and mentor for a small group of seventh and eighth grade girls at her church, Cape Christian Fellowship. She says she loves being able to be a part of those students' lives, and they make her happy to be there every week. She's excited to be graduating soon and ready to tackle whatever it is God has in store for her in the next few years. We're tickled to death to have you here and look forward to it. This evening's agenda includes the following. The invocation, presentation of colors and pledge of allegiance, four recognitions, one acknowledgement, public comment, consent action items, which include three items under executive services, five under business and finance, six under operations, two under teaching and learning, three superintendent's recommendations, one under attorney's recommendations, two items for public hearing, and four items under other business. Board members, is there a motion to adopt the agenda? So moved. Second. Moved by Ms. Fisher, second by Mrs. Dozier. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries four to zero. I'll note that Mr. Armstrong is not with us tonight uh, due to an illness. Mrs. Dozier will now deliver the invocation, after which Mrs. Fisher will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. <coughs> after, after the special presentations portion of the agenda, I'll call a brief recess and allow those who wish to depart the opportunity to do so. Please stand. Please bow your heads. Dear God, we thank you for the opportunity to gather here at this special meeting this evening. Bless each person that is represented and bless each of their families. We ask that you guide the superintendent as she brings forth all of her recommendations this evening. Please guide us as a board during all of our discussions and give us the wisdom to make the correct decisions concerning every issue that, we'll, that we face, which will be in the best interest of every child that we represent and our entire community. We pray that this meeting will be successful, productive, and blessed. We give you the glory for what we will accomplish this evening. Amen. Tonight, the cadet presenting the national colors will be introduced by First Sergeant Esteban Jarmillo of Mariner High School, JROTC. First Sergeant Jarmillo retired from the Army in December of 2003 
and began working as a JROTC instructor in Polk County. In 2008, he was selected as the Teacher of the Year for Ridge Community High School. He began working as a JROTC instructor at Mariner High School this year. By Cadet Lieutenant Colonel Carrick Brennan, Deputy Brigade Commander, Mariner High School, JROTC. Carrick is a senior and an excellent student with an overall GPA of a 3.52. Carrick is involved in every aspect of JROTC and has earned the second highest rank and leadership position in the Triton Brigade. Carrick's future plans include pursuing a degree in psychology and criminology uh, at the University of Mississippi and becoming an Army officer. Please join us in saying the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Seated. Once again, Ms. oh, there we go. Once again, this year, the Lee County School District was well represented at the Florida Music Educators Association All-State Music Conference, which was held January 8th through 11th in Tampa. Tonight, we are recognizing 66 students who attended the conference and earned All-State recognition and awards in various areas. Before I call the students forward to be congratulated by the board and superintendent, I would like to present these certificates to Ms. Falaris who is accepting on behalf of the students. Their certificates will be distributed to the students once they exit the boardroom at the conclusion of our special presentations. We will take group pictures several times during the recognition. Students, I'm asking you to return to your seats after the pictures and as a courtesy to the other individuals being recognized this evening that you not exit the boardroom until the conclusion of our special presentations. Thank you. Okay, well, don't, because I've got the notes on mine, but that's okay. Uh, first is elementary chorus, Kennedy Clark, Cape Elementary School. Please come up when your name is called. Tommy Freundlich, Cape Elementary School. Cameron Leith, Cape Elementary School. Kirsten Bailey, Skyline Elementary School. Abigail Fletcher, North Fort Myers Academy for the Arts, and Natalie Flores, North Fort Myers Academy for the Arts. These students are being recognized for their elementary chorus. Orchestra Middle School Level, Jay Janiga, Diplomat Middle School, Martin Smith, Cypress Lake Middle School, Cynthia Sheng, 
Three Oaks Middle School. For band, middle school level, 7-8, honor band. Kaylee Soltes, the Alva School. Ryan McGarry, Cypress Lake Middle School. Evan Esposito, Diplomat Middle School. Emily Van Dyke, Golf Middle School. Brandon Christensen, North Fort Myers Academy for the Arts. Michaela Whitman, Three Oaks Middle School. Catherine Book, Varsity Lakes Middle School. Tristan Janicek, Challenger Middle School. Middle Level Treble Chorus, Hannah Deeren, North Fort Myers Academy for the Arts, Trace Dunn, North Fort Myers Academy for the Arts, Julia Herman, North Fort Myers Academy for the Arts, Jesse Massari, North Fort Myers Academy for the Arts, Stephanie Morganegg, North Fort Myers Academy for the Arts, Shade Summerall, North Fort Myers Academy for the Arts, Elena Gall, Three Oaks Middle School, Caleb Ramos Perez, Trafalgar Middle School. For middle level mixed vocal chorus, Alexa Lohman, North Fort Myers Academy for the Arts, Ashley Puglio, North Fort Myers Academy for the Arts, Chantal Santer, North Fort Myers Academy for the Arts, Casey Tester, North Fort Myers Academy for the Arts, Ian Wolf, North Fort Myers Academy for the Arts, Katie Feeney, Three Oaks Middle School, Sean Martin, Three Oaks Middle School. Philip Stringham, Three Oaks Middle School. High School All-State Honor Band, Napoleon Galang, Cape Coral High School, David Norville, Cypress Lake High School, High Level All-State Symphonic Band, 
Bryson Wheeler, Lehigh Senior High School, High Level All-State Concert Band. Orchestra, High Level Honors Orchestra, Cassidy Davis, Cypress Lake High School, Cecilia Schreiber, North Fort Myers High School. Orchestra, High Level 910, Stephanie Van Den, Cypress Lake High School, Thomas Danzi, Cypress Lake High School, Albert Wu, Fort Myers High School, and Megan Burkhead, Lehigh Senior High School. Chorus is next. No, he's orchestra. Max, and you guys forgot something. Somebody. Who? I was told he Max wasn't New here. Orleans. Who? Max New Orleans. Cypress Lake High School. No, Max New Orleans. He's, he's Max is here. Yeah, he's both in the He's orchestra. Mm -hmm. And he's with who, Max? Oh, yeah. there he is. Missed a name. I apologize. Maxwell Norleans, Fort Myers High School. High Level Senior High Mixed Chorus, Taylor Boutel, Fort Myers High School, Jessica Forbes, Fort Myers High School, Tara Kane, Fort Myers High School, Christian Kohler, Fort Myers High School, Kenya Center Charles, Fort Myers High School, Dara Craig, Cypress Lake, oh, this is Senior Women's Chorus coming up, Dara Craig, Cypress Lake High School, Bridget Mc McPherson, Cypress Lake High School, Mary Catherine Boring, Fort Myers High School, Bhuvna Mahajan, Fort Myers High School, Anjali Batista, North Fort Myers High School, and Senior Men's Chorus, High Level, Josiah Vega, Cypress Lake High School, Othello Santa Charles, Fort Myers High School, Camarda Marcello, Lehigh Senior High School, Jesse Rogers, North Fort Myers High School, Carlos Torres, North Fort Myers High School. I want to thank all the students for sharing their wonderful talents with us and the community.
At this time, I'd like to invite Mr. Mike Burston and Dr. Jason Kurtz to join me at the lectern. Mr. Burston is the director of the Exceptional Student Education Services, and Dr. Kurtz is an Exceptional Student Education Services coordinator. Positive Behavior Support, or PBS, is the application of evidence-based strategies to assist schools in increasing academic performance and safety, decreasing problem behavior, and establishing positive school cultures. Specific characteristics of PBS model schools are their consistent method methods of utilizing their data to better serve students and staff, teaching PBS to new students throughout the school year, establishing creative and engaging reward systems, extending PBS throughout the campus, and partnering with the community while incorporating PBS in daily activities across all available teaching opportunities. This year, six district schools are being recognized for their dedication to the Positive Behavior Support Initiative. As I announce the names of the schools, I would like the representatives to please come forward. Bayshore Elementary. Diplomat Elementary. No, Diplomat Middle, excuse me. Rama C. Page Elementary. Trafalgar Elementary. Mira Lakes Elementary. And Three Oaks Middle. While they're coming up, Mr. Burston, would you like to say something, please? I used a small piece of paper so I wouldn't say much tonight. <laughs> Board members and Dr. Graham, people have a choice tonight. They can either turn on their TVs and watch the Olympics in Russia, or they can turn on their TVs and watch the board meeting where they will see the gold, the silver, and the bronze in our district. I want to thank Lynn Harrell, Angela Rolls, Susan Caputo, Ann Fainer, Sue Zellers, and Mike Carson, the principals, for their leadership and support of this PBS initiative. And Dr. Jason Kurtz will now speak about the PBS project with a few words himself. First, I want to say congratulations to our six model schools for this year. The PBS process is a team-based approach that relies on a really strong collaboration between the teachers and the administration and the families in order to develop a more positive culture on their campus. It provides a positive and effective alternative to traditional methods of discipline and can reduce or eliminate the need to use suspension as a, and expulsion as disciplinary options. We currently have approximately 50 schools in our district that are implementing the principles of PBS and we are really proud of the hard work and dedication that these six model schools and the faculty, staff, and students at, on their sites have um, exhibited. They should be commended for their achievements and being recognized by Florida's Positive Behavior Support Project. And first time um, recipients of model school status are receiving a banner, that's what's rolled up in those tubes, and a certificate and um, schools that are receiving another model school award, they have a decal for their banner on their campus. So congratulations. Okay, and now we will talk about Diplomat Elementary. Are you finished? Oh, yeah. Sorry. The Florida Department of Education, in recognition of Celebrate Literacy Week, January 13th to 17th, 2014, sponsored a contest for students to create a public service announcement, PSA, to promote literacy. Media specialist Michelle Harkle Road took the lead on this project, asking the fifth grade class to assist with the creation of the video. The students chose the theme, assisted on the script with coaching from Mrs. Harkle Road, and then edited over three minutes of content into a 30-second PSA. 
The PSA was entered into the state competition. And on January 16, 2014, we learned that the Diplomat student video had been awarded second place in the elementary division. Diane Mintz helped facilitate the process. She is the teacher at Diplomat's part-time gifted program. We would like to introduce the winners. Mara Vertries, principal. Diane Mintz, gifted teacher. Michelle Harkelroad, media specialist. And our Diplomat Elementary fifth grade students. The school board and the superintendent are pleased to congratulate Diplomat Elementary for being awarded second place in the state public service announcement contest for Celebrate Literacy Week. And we have this beautiful certificate for you, Ms. Bertries. Thank you very Congratulations, much. Congratulations, students. Congrats. Great work. Put my glasses down here and I can't get them out. <laughs> Good evening. I would like to ask Miss Mikey Stroh, Miss Lisa McCarthy, and Miss Patricia Reyna to please join me here at the lectern. Ms. Stroh is the district's coordinator for social studies, fine arts, character education, and AVID. Ms. McCarthy is the art teacher at Lehigh Senior High School, and Ms. Reyna is the 11th grade student at Lehigh Senior High. One of the great education reformers, Horace Mann, in the 1840s helped to improve instruction in the classrooms nationwide advocating that character development was as important as academics in the American schools. Each month, there is a creative competition for high school students <clears throat> enrolled in technology and digital design classes. Students are provided an opportunity to create a graphic that illustrates and or incorporates the character education word of the month. The winning designer has his or her design displayed on the computer monitors in the district schools and online in character education sites and receives a pizza party sponsored by the Foundation for Lee County Public Schools. A student will be recognized each month for being selected the winner of the character education digital design competition. The winner for the month of December is Miss. Ashley Stone, a senior from Fort Myers High School. Ms. Stone could not be with us this evening due to taking dual enrollment classes at Edison State College. The winner for the month of January is Ms. Patricia Rainier. Patricia, wave to everybody. The school board and the superintendent are pleased to congratulate these students for their creative designs and for the character words education in our schools. And if you would like to look up there, you can see her design. That was her winning design for the month of January. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you.
I supposed to do it down there? You can do it up here. The character word for February is honesty. This means being truthful and trustworthy. Tell the truth. The late Ed McMahon once said, honesty is the single most important factor having a direct bearing on the final success of an individual, corporation, or product. We'll call a brief recess for any of you who would like to leave at this point in time. Um, conversations, please take them out in the hallway so we can continue at the earliest possible time. Look, we missed a student. Is that the student right there? Oh, and do you want us to come down? Jordan Farrell. We were checking all of our students in, and I didn't see her. Then she must have forgot this sort of thing going on. Okay, that's all right. Well, come on. I'm sorry. No, 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 that's okay. We're sorry. Oh, we get contact next week and we post our staff to you. We missed the students. So what do you want to do? You want to talk to your mom? Where's your mom? Have your mom come down here. I'm just going to get a picture with you.
Ms. Flares. All right, the next item on the agenda is public comment. Mr. Martin, would you please address that agenda item? School board policy provides the opportunity at this point in the meeting to address the board concerning any matter on this meeting's agenda or any other matter relevant to the operation of the school district. If you completed a card and submitted that to me before the meeting began, you'll be called in the order of the card submitted. If you did not submit a card but still wish to address the school board this evening, the school board chair, Mr. Scott, will give you an opportunity in a moment to express that desire. The rules concerning public comment to the school board are posted at the back of the room and include the requirement that any speaker wishes to address the school board to endorse a purchase of a product or a service in which that speaker has a personal interest. The speaker must reveal that interest before making comment to the board. The school board does not respond during public comment time to remarks made by speakers. At the conclusion of public comment time, the school board chair may address concerns raised by speakers or may assign responsibility to the superintendent to do so. The time allowed per speaker is three minutes. Mr. Scott, I have four cards this evening. All right. Is there anyone on the right-hand side who did not complete a card but would like to speak? On the left-hand side. All right, please call the first card. First speaker is Ms. Alicia A. Shaw. Good evening, Lee County School Board and Superintendent Graham. My name is Alicia Shaw and I'm a full-time resident in Lee County. More importantly, I'm a mother and a grandmother of the most wonderful children in the world. At the conclusion of the last school board meeting, I had a brief conversation with Chairman Scott, and I will emphasize brief, and shared my views about the advisory committees. In my opinion, they are time consuming at best and non-productive with little or no measurable results. I am requesting the school board to consider the following. Review each advisory committee and determine if there is any law or federal statute which requires it to exist. Com secondly, combine the remaining committees into three groups organized by location, like the three zones of the school district versus having a committee for each specialized function or activity. And thirdly, if the superintendent is not already authorized or empowered, empower Superintendent Graham to form two to three short-term ad hoc advisory committees as she deems necessary. I can only imagine how much time the superintendent and each of you on the board spend in advisory committee meetings. The public can and should have multiple opportunities to participate in the school district and offer their opinions, and yet there are more efficient ways to accomplish it. One thought is to task your public affairs group to disseminate information via the latest technologies, via social media and cell phone messaging and at the same time utilize low or no tech means, in other words, conventional methods such as churches and other similar gathering places. At the next school board meeting, I will be suggesting how each of us can do our part to address the recently released report published by the college board, which states children of color and children from limited income families lag seriously behind their peers when it comes to successfully completing advanced placement exams. In every state in the United States, children from limited income families lag their peers. In 37 states, in the great United States, Hispanic children lag. And show your time is up, ma'am. Next speaker is Ms. Melissa Chase.
everyone. Can you hear me okay? Um, I come to you as a concerned parent. I have two girls in North Fort Myers High School. Actually, let me rephrase that. I have one girl left in North Fort Myers High School. Last week, my daughter, my eldest, received a threat from another student, and she did report this to the administration. Um, 24 hours later, my daughter was assaulted, badly injured, had to receive medical treatment, and the other student was arrested on premise, charged with questionable felony assault, and uh, I attended a hearing because my daughter did try to fend her off. My daughter was sent to ALC, and the other student was not. I have four witness statements, all showing this other student grabbed my daughter from behind and grabbed her neck, which supports the felony charge. I have documented images of this assault on my child, who's 100 pounds soaking wet. Um, I am very fearful for my other daughter, who has a growth hormone deficiency and is 4 foot 10, about her ability to be safe in that school. The current administration went down from three lunch periods to two lunch periods, and I'm not exactly sure of the census of North Fort, Hires, North Fort Myers High School. I would say 1,500, 1,200. You would take more students, you put them in a confined space, and you're bound to have more issues that are going to occur. This incident occurred as my daughter was leaving a classroom, and she was not protected. I'm very upset about that. Um, I come to you as a school board because I figure ultimately you're not going to be told the facts from this administration, um, but I have the pictures, I have the police report, I have the <laughs> medicals, and I really would like you to address um, how, you, how your principals are making their decisions when it comes to violent acts. I would support that any child that's aggressive in nature and is arrested on premises would not be allowed back into the premises. This other student is being allowed back onto the school campus at North Fort Myers High School. My youngest child that's there, who's a sophomore, who's very small, um, does not feel safe, and is now eating lunch in the bathroom. I think this is appalling. And then the principal did say to me, he asked my daughter to leave the room at the hearing, there were witnesses at this, said that maybe your daughter's not suited for public school. I take personal offense to that. I work in health care. I would never say to you, you're not entitled to health care. Thank you, Ms. Chase. Your time is up. Mayor. Thank you. Chase. Next speaker is Ms. Amy Mayer. Yes. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen of the board. Dr. Graham. My name is Amy Mayer. I'm a third grade teacher at Allen Park Elementary and a 2013 Golden Apple teacher. I'm here with my Golden Apple colleagues, Fernando Vasquez and Morgan Wright. We're excited tonight to share with you the details of a project that we hope will have a lasting impact on teaching and learning in Lee County Schools. And we hope that you'll support our endeavor. In par partnership with the Foundation for Lee County Public Schools, we've created the Golden Futures Scholarship. This scholarship will be awarded to one Lee County High School senior annually who has the passion to become an educator. The scholarship will pay all four years of their tuition to Edison State College so that they can complete a BA in education. In addition, we created a mentorship core made up of the Academy of Teachers. Those are all former Golden Apple recipients. This prestigious group will mentor and provide support for the Golden Future Scholars throughout their college experience. And the only stipulation that we ask of this scholar is that they pay back their scholarship with experience in Lee County Schools. Upon graduation, they would start their career here with us, and they would have continued support from Golden Apple mentors. With the experience, our expert guidance of our student services coordinator, Lori Brooks, and the amazing efforts of all of your high school guidance counselors, they got the word out to Lee County seniors, and we recently selected four outstanding finalists for this scholarship. After a round of interviews next week, we will be privileged to present our first ever Golden Future Scholar. 
to support this endeavor and to ensure that scholars compete, complete their degree debt free, we have stepped up into the world of fundraising, something very new for all of us. You might notice that the three of us are in jeans tonight rather than our regular teacher attire. And that is thanks to the generous support of Dr. Graham and her team in making this show your love for education week across the school district. We are especially grateful to Dr. Bohatch and Student Services for partnering with us to sponsor a campaign that we're calling Five for the Future. And in every school and every district office this week, for a donation of just $5 to our fundraising campaign, campaign, any district employee can wear jeans for the entire week. And I can promise you that that has made it a great week in Lee County Schools. <laughs> we want to thank all of the principals and the district department heads that have stepped up to support us in this fundraising effort. The sea of jeans that we have already seen across Lee County um, will go a long way to funding this scholarship. We thank you for your time this evening and allowing us to share the details of these great projects. We hope that you are as excited as we are about this effort. We appreciate your support because we know that this program will have a lasting impact on the future of Lee County Schools. Thank you for your time. Last card comes from Ms. Larry, Lori Fahey. My name's Lori Fahey, sorry about that. Um, as you know, I'm a mother of a, of a fifth grade boy in school. Um, tonight I wanted to talk with you about dyslexia. Um, my son was diagnosed two years ago. We were in private school and the school um, referred me to public school because they offer more assistance with learning disabilities. Um, while I appreciate <coughs> that Florida acknowledges dyslexia as a specific learning disability, um, I've come to realize that they don't really teach in a way that children with dyslexia can learn best. So what I've discovered is that we're we're giving these kids more assistance, but basically we're just giving them an extra hour of what the other students are, are receiving. And if they can't learn it the first hour, they're not going to learn it the second. Um, Duval County recently, um, last year, did a pilot program and brought in special instruction for kids with dyslexia. And it proved to be so good that they were voting on it to make it a quasi-magnet uh, school for their county. I'm hoping that you might look at their research and see if this would be something that would work for Lee County. 20% of our population is affected with dyslexia. Um, many of the other kids that, are, that have IEPs are also uh, visual learners. So they would benefit also. I think you'd see improved scores on the test. Um, we'd, we'd have a lower dropout rate if we're able to teach these kids and, and keep them stimulated. So I'm hoping you'll consider that. I can send you information on it. Um, as a last note, the group that I work with, Teaching Not Testing, is working to bring a screening to Fort Myers on the movie. It's called Dyslexia the Movie, um, produced by Harvey Hubble. And so I hope you'll all attend that. It's, it's an education documentary. Thank you. Good afternoon, members. Uh, board members and uh, Madam uh, Superintendent, I got it right. I got it right this time. Um, I never come up here with uh, pointing fingers, okay? I try never to do that because I don't understand everything and I know there's always more to the story. But I have to bring this. Please turn on the microphone. No, your time's not running. <laughs> oh, okay. Now it's running. Mr. Scott, as much as I love you and respect you, and I do, 
I noticed that sometimes you say no a lot. And I don't know why. I know there's a reason for it. It's just that I don't know what it is. And you have probably a reason to be negative to what a lot of things. Some of the things that I hear that are brought up that you say no to or that you disagree with or don't go along with, I logically understand why. But I also realize that sometimes when we're so negative, it's because maybe we don't feel good. I know sometimes when I don't feel good, I'm the most negative person you've ever met. So because of that, and I've been sick for the last couple of days and I'm real negative. I have brought you something f with love, okay? It doesn't have any strings. There's no hook and lines and no um, attachments or any of those other catch 22s. This is just from my heart. And I hope that this will make you feel better if you don't feel good today. And if you find something wrong with chocolate, share it. It'll make you feel better. I do respect you very much, and I would not want to do any of your jobs. I couldn't. I'd be sitting up there crying. So please accept my token of kindness and love and wellness. And don't say no. Get over here and so I can give you a hug, will you? <laughs> well, I can't be like that, that sergeant guy. I can't. Leg doesn't go high enough. Do you need the bag? No, you can recycle that if you like. <laughs> I do, um, I want to respond to this comment first. One of the things I learned as my kids were growing up, and as you can imagine, I was a good bit larger than my kids, was the sound of my voice and the physical presence of my body came across differently to them than I intended it to. And I've sort of had that in the back of my mind throughout my life and tried to uh, overcome that to the greatest degree possible. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Sometimes I have great passion about some of the things we're talking about up here. And I want to share that and articulate it as best I can. So if I'm not doing a good enough job of that, I'm going to do better. There are very serious issues we deal with because they deal with kids. And uh, I want to be as straight and honest as I can be with everybody every step along the way. And uh, I appreciate and take your comments constructively. And uh, the fact that you thought about me in this way means a lot. I appreciate it. Thank you. Michelle, I, I would ask that uh, Perhaps Dr. Graham and Mr. Martin might put their heads together. We are constrained by, where'd you go? Oh. We're constrained by policy, which requires the existence of certain of these committees. And uh, until that's changed, we need to continue. So I would be interested to know what thoughts they might have in terms of what you're recommending. So if you could expand upon your thoughts that you were making tonight, send it to me in written form. I'd be happy to have further discussions with them. And then perhaps we could bring it forward and have further discussion at, a, at an upcoming briefing meeting. Uh, because I believe that all of us up here have felt that the committee structure works when the committees are actively involved. And this year, I think we've seen more of that than we have in the past. But could it be better? Probably so. So we, I would like to, if you would please send me the further thoughts that you have, I'd appreciate it. We'll go from there. And uh, Dr. Graham, I'd ask you to follow up on uh, Ms. Chase's 
uh -huh. comments about North Fort Myers. I saw you taking notes about that. Whatever that situation is, we need to address it as quickly as we possibly can. And, and uh, are, uh, are we all up to speed on the uh, Golden Apple, the scholarship that they were talking about earlier today? Okay. We appreciate your efforts in, in getting all of that ready to go. It really falls in line with what we were talking about this afternoon's briefing meeting as well, encouraging people, young people, particularly local students, to become involved in teaching. So I thank all of you for your comments. Next is the approval of action items in the agenda under consent. Board members, are there any agenda items you wish to pull for further discussion? Mrs. Morgan? Uh, yes, I have three. Okay. Which are they? Uh, item 4C2, page 44. Item 4C3, page 48. And item 4C4, page 52. Okay. I have none. Stozier. Ms. Fisher? This evening. I have none as well. So with the exception of three items that have been pulled, <coughs> is there a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. Second. Motion by Ms. Fisher, second by Ms. Dozier. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries 4-0. We'll now move to the three pulled items, first being 4-C-2 located on page 44. Dr. Graham, could you report that one for us, please? Approval of the job description modification of Executive Director Staff Development Teaching and Learning to Executive Director Teaching and Learning and authorization for the superintendent to execute related documents. Is there a motion for the pulled item? So moved. Support. Motion by Ms. Fisher, second by Mrs. Morgan. Discussion? Ms. Morgan? Um, I pulled. I pulled this item uh, because I felt that the job description was incomplete. Um, the title says Executive Director Teaching and Learning. Um, it says that it supervises staff development and leadership curriculum services and exceptional student education. But the qualifications in no place address exceptional student education. Item number two refers to knowledge, knowledge of current research-based best practices in curriculum and instruction and assessment, but says nothing about research-based best practices in ESE. A minimum three years of successful experience in curriculum and instruction, assessment, and staff development, but nothing about experience in exceptional student education. So I would like to pull this item and refer it back to the superintendent for um, um, amendment. Do you have any comments, Dr. Graham? There is a director for exceptional student education, the executive director role, and what we're doing is, is taking three departments within the teaching and learning division and combining them. And the director of exceptional student education, Mike Burston, does have experience and does have knowledge. The executive director is intended to oversee the work of that department. One of the reasons that we have combined it with staff development and curriculum is because there is a new um, law that goes into effect July 1 that anyone who applies for recertification will be required to have a minimum of 20 in-service points in exceptional student education or have taken a course or they are going to be unable to be recertified, anybody after July 1 of this year. And so the thinking is that ESC needs to be in staff development because many of the people in that department will be providing that training. Um, and I would tell you that I'm not sure every executive director has expertise in every area of their division without the underpinning expertise of, of the directors that are in their division. And in my conversation with Dr. Graham, I said that since we have no say over personnel uh, recommendations made by the superintendent, it is critical that we have very well-defined job descriptions. And I would like to see SE incorporated. I, I have no problem with a superintendent coming to the board and saying, 
I think an exception should be made, but I think we leave ourselves vulnerable to future superintendents making choices that may not be in the best interest of, of uh, the children in the district. So um, I will not support this as written. Other discussion? Stozier. Well, I had a concern, and my concern was completely different. Um, I understand teaching and learning, and I had a concern that staff development was left out or, you know, to be pulled out. I mean, that is one of the most important components. And while I see up here that the person is going to be over that division, and that's part of what that will be, but to leave that out of the job title, I'm not sure. I, I do have to lean towards Mrs. Um, Morgan and have to agree that I think that that's, an that's something that's an essential part that we're leaving out. And of course, exceptional student education is a part of your staff development um, training. So I, I, I have to, I have to lean towards that. Um, I would ask Mrs. Morgan how we could go about tweaking this to where we could get it satisfactorily. Um, what do you think it needs to have added to it? Well, uh, since it refers to, under qualifications, experience, knowledge, um, uh, with respect to two of the three areas being supervised, I simply think that the same um, uh, requirement ought to be made for the third. So in other words, knowledge, knowledge of current research-based best practices and curriculum, instruction and assessment, and ESE. Minimum three years of successful experience in curriculum, instruction, assessment, and staff development, and ESE. I'm going to ask to pull this item. I'm concerned about the board writing the job description at the table. And um, again, I'm going to say that the executive director position is an oversight position. Teaching and learning is the division. There is an assistant superintendent for teaching and learning, so the logic is assistant superintendent, and then there's an executive director. Um, if, if what I'm hearing is we need to name every element in the title or they need to be, have experience in every, every area that they're overseeing, we're going to struggle to get people. And I will also say that I'm very, very comfortable with the person that's going to have this role. And whether we change the job description or not, I will come back with that same recommendation. So, but I, I'm, I'm very uncomfortable with trying to rewrite it here. I'd rather just pull it back and, and work with it a little bit more. I'm unsure that it'll come back exactly as it's being asked to come back now, but I um, can certainly rework it a little bit. Mrs. Dozier. And I was not here today for the briefing session. Was there any type of a briefing on this? On this job description, no. And see, this was the one, this okay, was the one we- part of the problem because usually any time a job description comes before us, and I meant to ask you that when I, you and I had our, our meeting, if this was going to be briefed, because that is when, that gives us the opportunity to, to work it out. And right now, you're bringing it to us at the table, and the only time we have a chance to work it out in defense of Ms. Morgan is here at the table. Well, and she shared and with me. Okay. She and, had concerns. Well, she had concerns, but her fellow board members didn't have any clue that she had concerns also. So I think for future uh, reference, I think it's very important that this always come to a briefing meeting first, okay. whether it be a briefing through memo, and then we can talk to you about it. That tells us that maybe there's a reason we all need to have a, an out loud discussion for it. But, but in the 14 years that I've been on the board, we always have the job descriptions that come for a briefing. Okay. We'll pull so, the other two. There's a, a motion and a second on the on the floor to adopt the uh, recommendation of the superintendent to approve this job description. Uh, superintendent has requested the option of pulling this item. Before she can pull that recommendation, the maker of the motion, Ms. Fisher, would have to pull, would have to withdraw her motion. Okay, then I'll withdraw the motion. Well, the other two polls are also job descriptions, so if you want me to pull those as well, or if you want to have your discussion here, I, and, and I, will, I will have them brief from this point forward, I, 
I will tell you that I, because I didn't hear anything in individual conversations, I wasn't aware, but I will certainly have them brief from this point forward. Um, but the other, that's the other two are also job descriptions, and I, again, <coughs> I don't know if you want to have the conversation here, you just want me to pull those as well. Yes. Is that going to be your request when we get to the other two? Yes, but I would like to make separate comments about them. Um, I think well, it would no. be appropriate that's, to make that's, those at a briefing meeting. That's right. Okay. Thank you. That's what, that's we'll, what do. we'll do. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Three. So I'm going to withdraw C2, C4, C2, 4, C3, and 4, C4. And I agree, I think that a briefing meeting, that's an appropriate time for us to have a further discussion about it because no sense doing it here, but I, I share some of the concerns that you have about our being very particular about specific language that goes into a job description as opposed to what is, I believe, our responsibility to you as the chief executive officer. And uh, we need to discuss that further and publicly. <coughs> so that takes us through the consent items and we're finished with that piece we'll move to uh, superintendent's recommendations item 6b please well i am sorry i'm back to read the polls Approval to piggyback Pinellas County School Bids number 11480076 catalog discounts on multi-line educational products awarded to multiple vendors for the period of February 21st, 2014 through December 31st, 2014 at the estimated expenditure of $850,000 with an option to cancel if deemed in the best interest of the district. <coughs> Approval authorizes the superintendent to execute all related documents. You've heard superintendent's recommendation. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Support. Motion by Ms. Dozier, second by Ms. Morgan. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying <coughs> aye. Aye. Opposed like sign. The motion carries three is zero. <coughs> Item 6C, please. Approval of RFP number R116928JM for Wide Area Network and Internet Service awarded to Embark Florida doing business as CenturyLink for the period of March 9, 2014 through March 8, 2015 at the estimated annual expenditure of $1,100,000 pursuant to the same terms and conditions as previously approved by the board. Approval authorizes the superintendent to execute all related documents. Superintendent's recommendation, is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Motion by Ms. Morgan. Second. Second by Ms. Dozier. Your voice is getting weaker as the evening goes along. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries 3-0. Item D, please. Approval for a one-time increase to the estimated annual expenditure for bid number B116949GM for the purchase of cafeteria kitchen wares and equipment to Chef's Warehouse, Inc., Commercial Glass and Restaurant Supply and SRE Culinary Equipment and Supplies, LLC, for the period of June 3, 2013 through June 2, 2014, by $400,000 for a total estimated annual expenditure not to exceed $1,190,000, pursuant to the same terms and conditions as previously approved by the board and authorization for the superintendent to execute all necessary documents. You've heard the superintendent's recommendation. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Ms. Dozier, second by Ms. Morgan. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. The motion carries 3-0. We'll move now to board attorney's recommendation. Mr. Martin. Yes, Mr. Scott, board members have one recommendation this evening, which is to approve the filing of a lawsuit against Richard Milburn Academy of Florida Incorporated. During the 2012-13 school year, the Lee County School Board terminated the contracts of three charter schools operated by Richard Milburn Academy of Florida Incorporated due to inappropriate academic practices and deteriorating financial conditions. At the time of termination, each of the schools had received FTE payments for students they had reported but did not fully earn those because the contracts were terminated before they were able to do so. The amount of the unearned FTE payments uh, made to the three schools 
uh, and also the cost of additional services provided to the schools in, form, uh, in the form of uh, printing services, um, mail service, and food service uh, comes to a total of $99,792. Despite demands to refund the unearned uh, FTE and uh, cost of services, according with the provisions of the charter school contract, the payment has not been made. Uh, the corporation continues to operate charter schools in other Florida school districts. In this matter, the school district would be represented by Mr. Kevin Pendley of the law firm of Grant Fritkin and Pearson. The cost of litigation will be funded from the account established for the retainer contract with this firm. So this evening, I'm recommending the board approve uh, the filing of a lawsuit against Richard Milmer and Academy of Florida Incorporated to recover unearned FTE and the cost of other services provided to the schools in the amount of $99,000. <laughs> $792. You've heard the attorney's recommendation. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Motion by Ms. Morgan, second by Mrs. Dozier. Discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed the like sign. The motion carries three to nothing. Now to public hearing. Before we close the regular meeting and open the public hearing, I'm going to ask Mr. Martin to present his recommendation for this evening's public hearing item. Yes, uh, Mr. Scott, board members, the uh, one recommendation I'd have under this category this evening is to approve the revisions to policy 1.061, evaluation of the superintendent and school board attorney, to adopt the administrative performance assessment as the device to be used by the school board to evaluate the performance of the superintendent. The effective date of the board policy is of this revision to the board policy would be February 12, 2014. Thank you. I'll ask Dr. Graham to present her recommendation for this evening's public hearing item she's presenting. Approval of the creation of policy 2.202, .202, acceptable use policy governing student use of personal electronic mobile devices to provide guidance to students, parents, and administrators on the permitted use of personal electronic devices in our schools. The effective date of the board policy is February 12, 2014. We'll now recess the regular school board meeting and open the public, meeting, the public hearing. As indicated, the public hearing is to consider first a revision to policy 1.061, evaluation of the superintendent and school board attorney, and creation of policy 2.202, .202, acceptable use policy governing student use of personal electronic mobile devices. At this time, the public will be invited to speak on these two items. Time allowed for comment is three minutes. Is there anyone on the right-hand side who would like to comment? On the left side. Seeing no one, we'll close the uh, public hearing and move back to the regular school board meeting of February 11th. Mr. Martin, please <coughs> restate your recommendation for this evening's public hearing item. Yes, Mr. Scott, board members, uh, just for clarification, the reason uh, that the, the superintendent um, provides recommendations with respect to policy adoption and revision, uh, this is a rare situation where I would make that recommendation because the issue um, concerns the evaluation of the superintendent. And the recommendation this evening is to approve the revision to policy 1.061 evaluation of the superintendent and school board attorney to adopt the administrative performance assessment interest instrument as the device to be used by the school board to evaluate the performance of the superintendent. The effective date of the board policy, the revision to the board policy is February 12, 2014. You've heard the attorney's recommendation. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Support. Motion by Ms. Dozier, second by Mrs. Morgan. Any discussion? Mrs. Dozier. Um, I would like to just thank you, Mr. Martin, for bringing this forward because, you know, there was some discussion around the fact that there was an instrument that we have always used and it's our, it's an instrument that we've used since we um, started the quality initiative. And because this is an in instrument that was basically um, developed and modeled after quality practices and we do um, practice quality principles here in the district, it was an assumption, a custom, if you will, that we simply always use this along with the superintendent's goals that we evaluated them on. And it was not until that did not happen that uh, I realized that, you know, it wasn't 
it wasn't just because it was an assumption it had been done wasn't something that necessarily took place so um, after having discussion I appreciate the fact that the board members agree that this is a very vital part of the superintendent's organization um, structure and the fact that we can it gives us the opportunity to highlight the areas where the superintendent and the attorney are doing well um, if there's any deficiencies we can talk about those but this does an outstanding job I think of basically looking over every job every responsibility every job performance on a day-to-day -day basis and it gives us an opportunity to give feedback and I think for you two to be performing at your highest it's something that we should want to do and that is provide you with good feedback so I will be supporting this any further discussion all in favor signify by saying aye. <coughs> aye. aye. Motion carries 3-0. Dr. Graham, please restate your recommendation for this evening's public hearing item. Approval of the creation of policy 2.202, acceptable use policy governing student use of personal electronic mobile devices to provide guidance to students, parents, and administrators on the permitted use of personal electronic devices in our schools. The effective date of the board policy is February 12, 2014. You've heard the motion uh, proposed by the superintendent. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Motion by Ms. Morgan, second by Mrs. Dozier. Discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries 3-0. We'll move to board member comments. Mrs. Dozier, would you like to go first? I'm going to be very brief. Thank you. <coughs> first of all, Natalie, Natalia, congratulations on being selected by your fellow peers. We're delighted that you're here this evening. And um, later on, when it comes to your comments, you can tell us exactly what your experience was like this evening. Um, I had the opportunity this week to attend the Rotary Club for, uh, not this week, last week, for Fort Myers High School. And, you know, i just like to out loud thank <coughs> Fort Myers Rotary for what they do and the partnership that they have with one of our high schools. Um, I really wish that every one of our Rotaries could partner with one of our local schools and all of our civic clubs could partner with one of our schools. Board members, the next thing that I'm going to talk about is... Um, when I met with Construction Advisory last week, it was a really eye-opening for me. It was like an aha. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. You know, we have had conversations around referendums, and there is there is some doubt, there is some concern, there is. And these, you know, our advisory committees are committees that we depend on to actually assist us and help us when we have initiatives. So I'm going to, at a future meter meeting, be detailing some of the things that were actually talked about at that meeting. So I don't want to forget to do that. Dr. Graham, I just want to commend you and congratulate you on that wonderful video. In fact, I think anybody that has seen it if they if they watch the whole thing they've just got to have this big huge smile on their face and all of the kids that were in it all the all the staff I mean how in the world you got some of those staff members that are so serious to do some of the things that they did I have no idea but I mean that was absolutely unbelievable it, and I, I I wish that we would play it not only on our website but also on the TV channel because it's just <laughs> <laughs> I just think it is it was to me it just it was it just made me just so happy and laugh and and it also it also shows how committed our people are to our district and and uh, that that not only do they work real hard but they can have a good time too so thank you for that thank you oh, that's it thank Morgan. you um, following on um, Ms. Dozier's comments about Rotary's partnering with, partnering with the schools. One of the things I <coughs> believe I've talked to Dr. Graham about, and maybe not, so I regret it, but um, I think this board needs to spend more time talking to uh, community groups like the Rotary, um, like the Chambers of Commerce, and I would like to be in the position to acknowledge the support that these community partners do have with the schools. 
I know that there are rotaries who are partnering with schools and we don't know who they are. And when we go out and talk to these people, we want to be able to say thank you from the district for the work that they do with the schools. So uh, that is something that um, I have been meaning to bring forward. Um, I, I just want to clarify that I, pu I pulled the three personnel items uh, because I told the superintendent that basically we're being asked to approve elements of a plan that we haven't seen. She knows where she's going with these recommendations. She knows what her goal is, but we do not. And that follows on uh, Ms. Dozier's comment, which is the same comment I was going to make, which is that we need to be briefed on these um, structural and operational changes before we're asked to commit to something that commits future boards in terms of staffing. And finally, I forgot to ask this this afternoon, and I apologize, but um, I know that Dr. Desimore will be um, observing the Board of uh, County Commission workshop on um, impact fees, and I personally believe it's important that someone from the board be there to support her, whether or not she's asked to speak. I think there needs to be uh, someone from the board signifying the importance of this issue to us. So I'm asking the chair. It was my intent to be there. Okay, very good. And those are my comments. Thank you. Ms. Camargo. Mr. S oh, I'm sorry. I would just like to tag onto that if I could. In the past, in fact, I will tell you, when we had impact fees passed back in 2000, I believe, um, anytime we had a meeting, anytime they had it on their agenda to discuss it, every board member showed up. Um, it is imperative that they see that there is unity, that there is, that, that they feel that it's not just one individual, even if there's one person representing the whole board, it wouldn't be a bad idea for every board member to try to be there. Well, I, I'll uh, send a memo out just to remind everybody of date, time, and location. Okay. <coughs> well, hello. Um, I hope everyone's having a good night. Uh, I know I am. <laughs> it's an honor to be here. Um, I appreciate this opportunity. Um, I have a few announcements from are a few of our fellow district high schools. Um, but in first note, um, for our rising ninth graders, um, forms for I the IB programs at your schools are due this Friday, the 14th. Um, I have a few announcements from Astera High School, which include um, today was the district NHS meeting um, at Ida Baker High School. Schools are starting a school supplies drive um, to support all of our, our district schools, and those supplies will be turned into Ida Baker in order to later on be distributed. Um, Island Coast High School has been awarded an A plus school. Um, Lee County Senior High School has been trying to raise uh, funds for a program called DECON um, that they are excited to be attended. Um, Fort Myers High School has raised over $3,000 for pennies for pasta. Um, and in other words, Cape Coral High School's Model UN team is now traveling to Boston <coughs> in order to compete in an international program competition. And that is all I have for tonight. Thank you. Very good. And we appreciate you being here and participating. Thank you. Mm -hmm. This morning I had the opportunity to attend the uh, Lee County School Board Foundation meeting. And it is, if you've never been, it, it might be something worth going and observing. Because when you see the involvement of business people who are in that organization, in what's going on in the school districts, it, it is incredible. The list never seems to stop in terms of what they're involved with, what they're doing. Their assistance is critically important, particularly as we try to get the business world more and more involved and connected with us and, and ourselves with them. I did mention this morning that I still felt that we had a serious capital funding issue 
and we talked very briefly around the edges about some of the potential solutions and I can tell you Mrs. Dozier that you could see the backs going up a little bit and there were some audible conversations afterwards about reluctance to be involved in additional taxation no matter how that came down or how it was organized but also uh, I would tell you an equal concern about the, the problems that we face in reality in terms of having seats and school buildings and so forth and so on, maintenance of, of 13 million square feet of facilities. Um, it's going to be a tough nut to crack, but we're, that's our obligation is to find a way to do it, to continue to deliver for our, the children in this community what they need in terms of uh, public education. Tomorrow I'm going to be speaking first thing in the morning to the Cape Coral Rotary. It's another one of those opportunities to get out there and deliver the message and I'll be talking a little bit about our uh, legislative priorities, where we're headed, those things that we think are critically important, as well as dealing with the capital issue with them and uh, trying to bring that down and, and into uh, an understanding of what it really means to, to the students in this, in this school district as we go forward if we don't solve the problem in some way. And just as a reminder for, for everybody in the district understands this, but in a couple of weeks the accreditation people will be descending upon our doorsteps and spending a few days. Uh, our staff has done a fantastic job in preparing for those visits. And <coughs> they will comb through as they do each time looking for opportunities for us to be better at what we do. And so any observations they make that talk about things that uh, we ought to be spending a little more time on, putting more attention to, they're done with, with a positive point of view toward the future and it is our obligation to deal with that and, and address the issues that they bring forward. I think they're going to see as many good things as they see things that may require some action on our, on our behalf. But uh, I, we are looking forward to that visit, some more than others, especially when they leave town. Um, Mr. Martin, you have comments? None this evening, sir. Thank you. Dr. Graham? Just a few. We have two staff members scheduled to attend that commission meeting. Though I agree with your comments. The more of you that can be there, I think the better. I think it's really important that leadership from one government entity see leadership from another. I just, I think that's a powerful message. Uh, we do have student information meetings. We had our first in Lehigh last Thursday and Friday morning, and um, this week it's at Island Coast. No, it's not. It's at Ida S. Baker High School on Thursday at 6 p.m., and then again at 7.30 in the morning on Friday. And we are encouraging the business community to attend those as well because we really want them to understand our student assignment system. This is not a meeting to sell it. It's a meeting to explain it, to give the history of it, and um, to take some of the mystery out of the lottery formula so that people understand how students are actually assigned. Um, I was very pleased. The crowds were small in Lehigh, but um, it was good to see that we did have a clerk of court there, and we also had um, the CEO from the Lehigh Chamber there who has asked us to come actually present to that chamber and we had a member of the sheriff's office there and we have um, and we had a, a, a local um, leader of one of our um, minority communities who also came and so we did send targeted letters to some of those community leaders in hopes that they would attend and they are and those who are SVP actually did come so that's encouraging we're expecting a larger crowd um, at Ida Baker and then we'll do it again at South the following week and we are scheduling a um, final session at Dunbar Community School as well. So there are several opportunities left for people to attend one of those meetings. It takes all of about 30 minutes and then if you want to enroll your child you can stay after that but the actual presentation takes about 30 minutes and people who have attended already have said it was very informative and there were things they just didn't know. So excited about that. Uh, I can't say enough about the Education Foundation. Uh, as Mr. Scott has already said, they are working very hard. Actually had a contractor stop me um, this morning at the end and said, I'm going to Tallahassee, <clears throat> and I believe we agree on some of the issues about capital funding. I want to help. I think it would be a great message to the legislators if they heard that 
there were actually builders who were <coughs> singing the same song as the school district. And um, so I talked to Bob Sarah today. He's going to be calling, and they're going to talk together. So he's got factual information from our perspective to share as he shares from the builder perspective. So I found that encouraging. Um, also, I went to Tallahassee last week, as you know, and I sent you all a summary. Um, the governor's roundtable, I've said to several people, I felt like I was on a fifth grade field trip on how a bill becomes a law. <laughs> it's not like the books say. And uh, so it was interesting, uh, but I did get the opportunity to speak to every member of our local <coughs> delegation. They were very generous with their time, got to share our local concerns. The governor um, presented his budget to, um, and the Commissioner of Education was there, to the to superintendents from around the state. Um, and his proposal for capital funding for the entire state is $80 million for public schools and $90 million for charter schools. And the, I did get the chance to tell him, as you know, grateful as we are that we're on his radar, that we have lost $656 million in capital funding in the last five years. And so 80 million probably isn't going to do a whole lot if that's all the state gets. I went to a committee meeting and where the budget was presented, and one of the legislators, not one of our local ones, but did ask the question, why more for charter schools? And the response from someone else on the committee was, well, if the charter school folds, that district gets their assets. And I think it's important to just say out loud that the majority of our charter schools are owned by large companies and the school itself really doesn't have any assets. So there's a fallacy there to think that we're going to get anything from a charter school that folds. Um, so interesting, but I'm grateful for the time that they gave. I'll be going back in March, as I think several of you will, which will be good. Um, it is an election year, and so there, there is that element of all of it. But they, they, um, they, they did listen and they asked a lot of questions and Bob is pulling together additional information for each of them at their request so that when they go to their different committee meetings, um, they, uh, they have solid information about our local situation to share. I am going to go next week to a State Board of Education meeting in Orlando and the reason I'm going is that um, the commissioner told us that that is the day when the um, the tweaks, I think, are what they're calling them, or the adjustments to our standards are going to be presented. And we're no longer calling them Common Core, we're calling them the Florida Standards for Career and College Readiness. And at that meeting next week, they're going to, the um, Commissioner of Education is going to present 99 recommendations to adjust the standards for Florida. 52 of those 99 recommendations are about calculus. And, um, Several are about cursive writing being reinstituted, and then there are some in relation to that about when printing will happen to prepare children to learn cursive writing. Some are about teaching decimals through the use of money, and then the others are pretty much math related. So um, I'm interested in going to that meeting to see if the State Board approves those changes, because until they do, they're an assessment won't be selected and we need to get on with it. We have asked as superintendents that the state not slow down the process of fixing the standards and getting, uh, getting the um, <coughs> assessment selected, but we have asked on the other side of it, consequences for those things be slowed down because teachers are being assessed and in some cases soon will be, their pay will be impacted by performance on a test we've yet to see. And I used to say it didn't matter because as long as we were teaching the standards, the assessment didn't matter. But the reality is the standards are changing now. So can't even say that anymore. So um, the legislators did hear that. And um, I think there is some element of agreement up there. They don't want to slow down the accountability system. And we're not asking for accountability to go away. But we are asking that the consequences be delayed at least for a year while these things are put in place. And then finally, I'm glad you liked the happy video. I would love to take credit for it. If the truth be told, the morning I was asked to dance and smile, I said, get out of my office. I don't want to do either of those things. <laughs> um, but the reality is that was our communications department, and it was intended for the state of the schools in the spring. And when it came out and was so positive and so upbeat, um, the guy said, can't we release it now? And I said, well, it's too good to just put out there as a random video. But we did know that uh, accreditation is coming and we are excited because we're going to get commendations and recommendations that will just help us grow. 
And so we decided to tie it to that and want everybody to be happy about accreditation, which is sort of like an oxymoron, but it seemed to work. And um, the video has gone viral. And we are very, very excited. Um, <coughs> Amity sent some statistics, and it's, I'll have to send them to you, but it's in uh, multiple countries at this point. And uh, the guys were anxious because it's a very popular song that Today Show is using it right now as part of the Olympics thing when they're doing montages of pictures. And we just wanted to be the first locally. And we're hoping that it catches on and that every school might make their own happy video. Um, but we will use it. We're going to share it with the accreditation team. And I just think it's an indicator, as you said, of how much the people in this district, in spite of all the issues and all the challenges that we have, how much the people in this district genuinely care about this district. And um, I never knew that uh, Marshall Bauer could swing like that. Mm -hmm. um, the custodian that cleans my area, when I said, you just twirled around your cart. And he said, he, we, we hardly, you know, we say hello, and he's very busy when he's in my office. But he did say to me last night, um, you know, next time we do a video, I think I need a dance partner. So, <laughs> so I'm going to practice swinging around a custodial cart, I guess. Anyway, so we're glad that it's been positively received. And uh, Marshall Bauer, and I'll end with this, Marshall Bauer, Education Foundation CEO, said, he called me, and I said, thanks so much for being in our video. And his comment was, you know, of all the great things we do at the foundation, guess what I've gotten the most email about? My spin on the happy video. <laughs> so, so I'm glad it's been a positive thing. It's kind of been a boost as we start this second semester and lead into a lot of things that are going to happen this spring. And that's it. And as always, I am grateful to lead this district. Thank you. Next scheduled meeting of the school board is February 25th. A workshop at 2 p.m. followed by a school board action meeting at 6 p.m. Having no further business to come before the body, is there a motion to, for adjournment? So moved. Second. Motion by Ms. Morgan, second by Mrs. Dozier. All in favor, signify by saying aye. The meeting aye. is adjourned. Nancy, did anybody correct that statement that was made in that committee?